In order to understand why geothermal and why quays, you have to understand the size of the energy transition challenge. I think only then do you truly appreciate that these things need to be done. They're not optional. They have to succeed if we're going to succeed with energy transition. My name is Carlos Araque. I am the CEO of, and co-founder of Quays Energy. I am a mechanical engineer. I worked for Schlumberger for 15 years, very familiar with oil and gas technologies. In 2017, I decided to change the course of my career. I figured the energy transition was going to be an important part of the rest of our lifetimes and career. I first started to learn about venture capital, became an investor for a little while, and that led me to discover the idea for what would become Quays. To me, it was very much about how the energy that the world consumes comes about, primary energy supply, and in seeking for possible solutions for the energy transition, we're talking about multiple terawatts. That's a big number. Those are trillions of joules per second. That's the size of our civilization. So the outlook for energy is one in which energy continues to increase globally. So we're looking for something that is able to provide energy at the 30, 40, 50 terawatt scale in the next 30 years, and maybe double that in the next 70 years. I became very, very convinced that Geothermal, but not just regular geothermal, deep geothermal, was going to be a very important part of the puzzle. You know, So Quays is really deeper, hotter, and faster than ever before possible. It's really about finding geothermal at the depths and the temperatures required to make it a true solution to the energy transition problem. When I talk about 50 terawatts by 2050, I think Quays has a very unique ability through its drilling technology to unlock a source that can actually scale to that challenge. Quays is very specifically looking at deep and hot geothermal. And by that I mean 300 to 500 degrees Celsius. That's about 600 to 1000 degrees Fahrenheit. And that means three to 12 miles deep. Why those numbers? Two very large reasons. The first one is at those temperatures, we can repower power plants. Most of the energy in the world today, electricity specifically, comes from a coal fire power, power, power plant or a gas fire power, power plant. What if you could repower them with geothermal steam? So that sets the temperature. And the depth is simply the need to do it globally. So we don't have to be constraining geothermal to volcanic areas, to the ring of fire. So Quays works on the drilling technology to really get access to those temperatures and depths. And that changes the outlook for geothermal. That makes geothermal truly a global resource. Most of the milestones for this year have been achieved already. For example, closing our Series A. We did that very early in the year. Hiring the person who would lead all the commercial strategy work. That's the beginning of the company thinking beyond the technology. We did that in Q2. And then building field deployable versions of the technology. Now building these machines takes the better part of 18 to 24 months. So we're well underway in designing, procuring the elements to build those systems in 2023. I think one of the most fundamental ones is coming out and showing to the world some of the achievements in the lab. So we're getting ready to do that in Q4 to show, offer the world a peek into this millimeter wave drilling process and how it looks like in the lab. The key goals going into 23 and 24 uh, very much has to do with showing what we can do in the lab but in the field. Now, that's easier said than done. Making field deployable systems requires taking lab equipment into the field, which is a very different operational setting. So ruggedizing, making things more compact, making things mobile. As we go into 2023, we'll build a truck-mounted millimeter wave drilling system. It's not a geothermal drilling system, but it's simply to go and do these things in the field. And in 2024, together with one of our key partners, neighbors, we're going to mount a millimeter wave drilling system into a drilling rig and start showing the process from the stage of a drilling rig. What has surprised me in the time since is how quickly things have moved to embrace energy transition. I've been able to raise $75 million, 50 of which came, I should say 60 of which came in the last 12 months. So certainly there's been a massive acceleration of appetite for solutions that can really meet the challenge. I think people are starting to realize it's an undervalued resource that has very large potential. And that's starting to put the spotlight in geothermal. It's all tailwinds for Quakes, you know. Everything that's happening out there with geothermal 
is just amplifying the winds that are helping us to move ahead. I think geothermal will continue to play an increasing role throughout the 2020s, but I think geothermal holds a lot more promise than that. And when you go deeper and hotter, geothermal becomes not just an add-on to wind and solar and the other energy sources, it becomes the key workhorse of the energy transition. So that's my aspiration for geothermal, that it actually truly takes over the 50, 60, 70% of the energy mix as we go into the 2030s, 40s, 50s and beyond.